वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला फिलासफी ई एम सच्चिदानंद मिश्र फ्रॉम बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिलासफी एंड रिलीजन एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज ए प्रोफेसर देयर एंड आई एम इंट्रोड्यूसिंग दिस टेक्निकल टर्म्स इन नव्य न्याय टू एंड इन द इन द कोर्स लॉजिक टू एंड द राइटर ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज प्रोफेसर उज्ज्वला झा द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस Uh, this module is to make you acquainted with the concept of relation in navya nyaya especially in last module we were introduced to the concept of relation as ex explained in navya nyaya and also the kinds of relations basically uh, direct relations and indirect relations we were also introduced to the particular relations contact inherence and also um, self linking relations and so these all relations were introduced and other indirect relations were also introduced simply but now they are going to be discussed in detail in this module so this is called this these are known as parampara sambandha in nyaya philosophy in navya nyaya philosophy and these are very important to understand because whenever we the nyayikas formulate the concept of vyapti or concept of pakshata or something else they heavily depend on this parampara sambandha on this indirect relations so in the previous module as there were there was introduction to the relation like samvay like sanyog inherence as well as contact and swarup sambandha that is known as self linking relations so these are very basic relations and taking these basic relations there is a possibility that we can formulate many indirect relations because any indirect relation cannot be formulated without adding another relation so when there is a basic relation so, you, so we can say that direct relation is actually basic relation and indirect relation is formulated from those basic relations adding two or more relations together and if those Uh, relations are added together they make a parampara sambandh and indirect relation so that that concept of indirect relation we are going to discuss in this module and if you um, if one understands the concept of parampara sambandh indirect relation so the navyanyaya language becomes very easy to understand because in navyanyaya always these indirect relations play very important role so uh, we will be discussing this example there, there are some examples and we will take one example first uh, and this example is color threads and cloth so color nayikas are of this opinion that color of cloth and color of threads are different two different things because color is a quality and the threads are is different substance and a pot is a different substance so between threads and cloth there is a relation known as inherence because threads and cloth these are actually parts and whole and between parts and whole there is a relation inherence so we can understand very easily that the 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 cloth is inherent in threads by the relation inherence so this is uh, one point here and another point can be understood that the color of threads is inherent in threads so between color of threads and threads there is a relation inherence and between color of cloth and cloth there is a relation inherence so these two are separate entities and if you are talking about only uh, one here and one there you can say that the color of threads is inherent in uh, threads and the color of cloth is inherent in cloth but you can say that actually one color which is inherent in threads 
can be present in cloth also and the color which is inherent in cloth can be present in threads also but not directly but indirectly so if we take an indirect relation we can say very clearly and we can understand that this one is inherent there and the relation is known as swa samvai samvetatva swa swa means swa samvai samvetatva whenever we take any indirect relation we take we introduce this term swa swa means self and this is the departure point of that relation so uh, this is very important to note whenever one indirect relation is there there must be the word swa and from this swa we go further and this is the starting point uh, and it indicates that where the uh, the relation has to start so this swa samvai samvetatva so we can say that the color of threads is present in cloth by the relation swa samvai samvetatva swa means the color of threads and that color of threads is inherent in uh, threads and in those threads the cloth is inherent so in that way we can say that this uh, color of threads is inherent in uh, inherent in threads and the, in those threads in the same thread threads that uh, cloth is inherent so so by this relation swa samvai samvetatva being collocated in the same place by the relation inherence so being inherent in this locus where it itself is inherent as both the relators are collocated and both reside in the same locus by inherence if we can say that this indirect relation is constituted by inherence so color thread and cloth here beginning from color of threads we can go to the cloth and we can say very easily and understand that this color of threads is present in cloth itself but simply we cannot understand that there is any direct relationship is possible but indirectly we can point out and it is present there in cloth so another example we can take here the example of we can say that a person is sitting in the house and the person is having a stick and a pitcher so uh, the person who is having a stick and a pitcher you you can observe very clearly that the stick uh, is related to the person and the pitcher is also related to the person and here between stick and the person between pitcher and the person there is a relation sanyog that is conjunction or contact but uh, I, not only this there is another way of saying there is a, a one step more and that one st an another step is there that the person is conjoined to the house so you can say that directly the person is conjoined to the house between the person and the house there is a relation conjunction and here there is another piece of um, another piece of relation between stick and the person between pitcher and the person but if you add these two relations together you can say swa sanyukta sanyoga and here swa means the stick or you can pick up the pitcher and the pitcher is conjoined to the person and the person is conjoined to the house so he, here this would be very simply that the stick and the pitcher are conjoined to the person and the person is conjoined to the house therefore by the relation so sanjukta samvai being conjoined in in conjoined the by this relation the stick and the pitcher both are conjoined to the house both are related to the house so in this way uh, in by an indirect relation stick and pitcher both are uh, related to the house so this um, can be understood this another example can be understood here and there are some more examples and here we, how this is this this is happening 
in this case how it is happening we can simply understand that there was there was there there were two sets of relations one set was there between the pitcher and the person and another set was there between person and the um, house and uh, in case of um, pot in case of uh, stick there was one relation there was one set of relation between stick and the person another was between the person and the house and these two relations if are taken together they make one relation that is an indirect relation which is swa sanyogi sanyoga or swa sanyukta sanyoga so these two are uh, very simply um, synonyms and they are used these two words are used interchangeably so another way of saying it because there is a, another possibility to understand this the same scenario and here we can also say that there is a, another relation swashraya ashrayatva so means here in the same example is taken here again and in this example swa means the same stick and or um, the same stick or the same pitcher and the ashraya ashraya means locus so a uh, locus of that pitcher is the person and the um, locus of that person is the house so in this case by the directly uh, the person is um, the the person is the locus of the pitcher but indirectly actually um, the house is the locus of the person as well as of that pitcher because directly um, the person is situated in the house the person is residing but the person is present in the house but indirectly not only the person is present in the house but also the pitcher is also present in the house and the stick is also present in the house by this uh, indirect relation because so so means if we take stick and the ashtray of the locus of that stick is the person and the um, locus of that person is the house so we can say that by the relation swashraya ashrayatva this is um, very easily understandable by this term swa means the self ashray means the locus and uh, locus of locus the locus of that a locus in that way one is take taken and another is taken and then another is taken so in that way you can add some more relations and you will be able to formulate many relations not only this is not the case that only uh, there should be two steps but there could be infinite number of steps a long number of steps and those taken together make another relation one another relation in that way in this case the, in the present case the house becomes the locus of the stick and also the of the pitcher indirectly so uh, this these indirect relations are very interesting from this point of view that in direct relations uh there are only a few things which are related as uh, it was discussed in last module that there are three basic relations and those relations are uh, considered as direct relations inherence contact and self linking relations so the, in those cases there is a limitation but in this case this case there is no limitation at all and this is the very in interesting point to note you can imagine Uh, an indirect relationship of any length um, and taking any relatum and any relation of any number so in the um, uh, in this way we can say that if two things are apparently not related to uh, re related to each other in that case also an indirect relationship is possible as we have observed in this case that there is no direct relationship between the pitcher and the house but because there is a relation between pitcher and the person and there is another relation between the person and the house therefore we can observe very clearly that how are there is a no direct relation but there is an indirect relation avail relation is available and that indirect relation is swasraya ashrayatva swa sanyukta sanyoga 
or swasanyogi sanyog whatever we call it so all these relations are possible and in this way we there is no obstacle uh, nothing no distance can harm here no distance can be any obstacle and we and can observe we can make that these two things which are uh, situated in a very very away from each other there is also a possibility of indirect relationship so uh, in this way uh, we can say that simply very interestingly we can say that uh, all indians exist in england by the by an indirect relationship so indirect relationship they can exist in england like uh, if suppose there was when there was a british rule in india uh, taking that point in that time it could have been said that all indians exist in, in england by the relation in direct relation and the dire, indirect relation would be the state of being the kingdom under the authority of their own ruler so it could be formulated in sanskrit in the in this way uh, that swa samrad adhishthitatva swa means those people who are indians and uh, uh, the samrat the king of those people the who is the king of those people at that time the british ruler was the king of that uh, those indians and uh, adhishthita means that king is also ruling the england and in that way these indians could be present there by this relationship in that way and we can formulate different way uh, that we can say that all english people reside in india however they are not they are actually in england they are not in india by any direct relationship but by an indirect relationship they are present here and they can be uh, present here because there is also possibility of formulating another indirect relationship that the state of being the empire of their own queen uh, so in that case we can observe that from this angle to another angle and from that angle to uh, this angle there is a possibility of this indirect relationship and this indirect relationship cannot have any limit and there is there would not be any possibility which can uh, make an obstacle so in order to understand this indirect relationship uh, we take some examples another examples uh, simply suppose we are taking a and b and we can say that a is related to b and b is related to c however a is not related to c directly but a is related to b and b is related to c and we can say that however they are not related to uh, each other directly but indirectly there is also uh, a relation between uh, a and c and this is the case here as the examples which um, we have discussed in all those cases this is actually the case because a is related to b uh, suppose in place of a there is a picture and is in place of b there is the person and in place of c there is the house and here between um, picture and bit, bit, between picture and uh, the person there is a relation uh, conjunction and between picture and the house there is a relation conjunction so we can see very easily that they however there is no direct relationship but an indirect relationship is possible and taking this indirect relationship we can formulate uh, precisely that uh, there is a relationship where apparently no relationship is perceived no relationship is observed but actually there is a, a relationship but this is the very basic requirement for any and and in pair for any indirect relationship as there that there must be uh, two things or more things but there be relationship among them suppose if a is related to b and b is not related to c we cannot say that a is related to c because the chain is getting broken and in so far the chain is not getting broken we can formulate a long chain and like, like the idea of 
and indirect relationship is uh, something like very similar to the idea of a chain where there are very small small um, pieces and those small pieces taken together could make a long chain and taking those long that long chain we can uh, make two points connected with each other do two points related with each other uh, so in the beginning point as we have explained that uh, at the time when india was not free uh, at that time we can say that india was related in the people of india are present in in england and also we can formulate some other examples some other relations uh, this is not one example that only that time it was possible nowadays also it is possible we can formulate some relations and according to those relations it would be very easily possible to say that indian people are present in america uh, like simply simply saying that being um, human beings because in indian people there is a uh, there is a universal manushyatva there is a universal human humanity you can say uh, human uh, humanity is present there and because of this humanity is present in all those human beings which are present in america which are living in america and the ashray the substratum the uh, the uh, substratum of those the locus of those that humanity is those person and then again you can conceive the idea that those human beings are present there and in that way we can say that these human beings are present in uh, england or america or anywhere else so this is this leaves you completely free um, to your imagination how much you can imagine but this point must be understood that this imagination uh, is playing in a role here in the formation of these relations but these relations are present there these are not imaginary but these are real because you are adding those relations which are the pieces of those basic relations are real therefore these indirect relations are also real you cannot say that they are imaginary so some more things about uh, these uh, indirect relations we can understand and we should uh, understand the point is that we started the discussion on uh, relation uh, saying that relation is something closeness but now we have come to uh, the point where it was observed it can be observed very clearly that there is a no closeness but there is a relation because where there is any closeness between india and america there is no closeness at all but there is a relation and uh, there is an indirect relation however there is no direct relationship but an indirect relationship so we should uh, note it here that relation is closeness is true only for the practical purposes only with the reference to the direct relationship so far as an indirect relation is concerned distance is not a problem and uh, rather anything can be related to anything else in the universe by an indirect relationship so uh, all human being can be related to any other human being by an indirect relationship namely the state of being an object of grabbing by the same death and even every every living creature could be related to all other because they all are living so in that way everything could be related to each other so the beginning point that first relatum of indirect relation and first relatum will exist in the second relation so these are two points which must be understood because if these two are not taken into consideration there will be the chain and the chain will be broken and so this point is to be understood here very clearly that in so far the chain is not broken there is a possibility of any indirect relationship and the indirect relation ship has no further boundary no further limit it can go uh, with anywhere it can relate to things which are 
present in two different places in two different time span wherever they are present it has no problem at all so now we are we, we, we are going to discuss another point and the point is that vritti niyamak sambandh and vritti niyamak sambandh because the point is that why it these two terms were not introduced earlier because unless we are very much acquainted with these two ideas of direct relationship and indirect relationship we cannot understand what is the vritti niyamak sambandh and what is vritti niyamak sambandh and the meaning of vritti niyamak sambandh the relation which is occurrence exacting and the relation which is non occurrence exacting so the relation which is uh, in simple terms it can be understood that if there is something by th that relation we can say that it is present there it uh, uh, is sit it, it is residing somewhere in that case the relation would be occurrence exacting relation and if the either other case is there if there is no possibility of saying that something is present by the relation somewhere then we cannot say that there is a ye vritti niyamak sam vritti niyamak sambandh there is a uh, there is an occurrence exacting relation so the examples which we discussed earlier uh, those all examples uh, however all not some of these examples are vritti niyamak sambandh Uh, occurrence exacting relations so direct relations these three direct relationship relations uh, contact and uh, inherence and uh, self linking relations these are uh, vritti niyamak sambandhas occurrence exacting relations so if there but it must be remembered that there are there is a possibility that two things are conjoined between two uh, between two things there is a relation Uh, conjunction but though that conjunction is not occurrence exacting relation as in case of our if our two hands are joined one uh, the those are joined vertically without um, sitting on another so in that case the that relation would not be considered as an occurrence exacting relation because we cannot say that my one hand is on another but if the point is something different if i put my one hand on another another hand and in that case i can say that my one hand is there in my on um, in uh, on my another hand and in that case this conjunction would be a, uh, an occurrence exacting relation so occurrence exacting relations are there through which um, if there is an occurrence exacting relation we can say that one is present somewhere by that occurrence exacting relation and this occurrence exacting relation is actually a regulator or a specifier thus the compound word vritti niyamak which is an adjective means that relation which regulates or specifies the existence of something in a particular locus so suppose there is a book on this table so uh, in that case this conjunction is an occurrence exacting relation because by this relation conjunction the book is present on the table but uh, the the sky the sky is related to this table and between sky and this table there is a conjunction but this conjunction is not actually an occurrence exacting relation because the sky is actually uh, conjoined to everything which is in motion but the sky is not present everywhere you cannot say that sky is there on this table so there is no adharadhyaya bhava so if there is adharadhyaya bhava when there is such kind of uh, Uh, understanding that some a is the uh, locus of b in that case uh, if if there is a relation and because of that relation one is having we are having such kind of idea that a is endowed with b by the relation by that relation or 
ए इन ऑन ए बी इज प्रेजेंट बाय द द रिलेशन वी कैन से दैट दैट इज एन ऑकरेंस एग्जैक्टिंग रिलेशन बट इफ इट इज नॉट द केस we can not say that there is an occurrence exacting relation so we can say that sky is not present on the table and therefore how where sky is akash is conjoined to the table but um, uh, this conjunction of akash with table is not an occurrence exacting relation and here conjunction is so we can observe that conjunction is sometimes occurrence exacting relation and sometimes it is not an exacting uh, occurrence exacting relation when we say that there is a pot on the ground bhutale ghata in that case it would be the conjunction would be occurrence exacting relation and when we are saying that uh, there is a uh, pot in, in the halves and there is a cloth in the threads there is a uh, there is an action there is a moment in the fan there is a color in in a substance in those cases when i say that the chair has red color in this case the red color is present in the chair and the red color is actually a quality and the chair is a substance between chair and this uh, red color there will be inherence the relation inherence and inherence is always an occurrence exacting relation so uh, in these cases we can say that actually uh, inherence is always exact um, occurrence exacting relation but other ex other examples if we are taking like conjunction conjunction is not always occurrence exacting relation but these uh, indirect relation what about these indirect relations there is also a point to note that if you are making an indirect relation uh, aiding uh, those relations which are occurrence exacting relations then uh, that non uh, that indirect relation would also be an occurrence exacting relation and if you are aiding any one of non occurrence exacting relations then the whole uh, indirect relation would not be a would not be an occurrence exacting relation so this is the idea between these two and this idea uh, is depicted in sanskrit language when we say that uh, something uh, if if we say that there is a pot on the ground in sanskrit we say bhutalam ghatvat so in sanskrit there is a uh, there is a suffix it is known as matu and this suffix indicates that if there is a something which is present there if pot is on the ground then we can say bhutalam ghatvat and we can say bhutale ghata and this suffix very clearly indicates that actually there is a relation and that relation is occurrence exacting relation and it is very important to note so in these examples it becomes very clear that if there is a relation and that relation is made from uh, um, inherence there will be uh, that relation would be occurrence exacting relation but this is not the guarantee bit contact because contact is not always occurrence exacting relation because there are issues when there is a contact between two substances one substance is not covering the other substance completely but if there is a um, relation um, inherence between two substances then you cannot say that one is separate from another those are very much um, connected with each other and in that case one is present in another by the relation inherence and that would be occurrence exacting relation clearly so bhutalavad ghatavad bhutalam when we say ghatavad bhutalam the speaker says that the ground is the position of pot so to denote the, that point that something is position of something uh, in this case it is 
all significance is given to the ground and the pot simply becomes the thing possessed, possessed by the ground. Thus the speaker has made ground the prime qualificant as he perhaps intends to say that the ground is such that it possesses a pot or that is, it is not empty. He focuses on the ground. So in this case uh, there is a um, relation occurrence exacting relation and uh, these two relations uh, inheritance and uh, uh, conjunction this this point is different that uh, inheritance is always occurrence exacting relation but contact is not always in a uh, occurrence exacting relation because the um, the contact does not cover the whole locus because uh, two things are vertically if are vertically related by the relation contact contact is not becoming in that case occurrence exacting relation so then in this diagram we can observe very clearly that two relations if there is a uh, an occurrence exacting relation one is uh, pointing to another and if there is a uh, occurrence non exacting relation then there are there is a relation between two things and those uh, that relation is not pointing to another and we cannot say that there is any adhara bhav in these two things and when there is not adhara bhav we cannot say that there is a, an occurrence exacting relation so one example about uh, non occurrence exacting relation is that when we say that uh, there is it is said that there is a sattva or swamitva so uh, there is a there is a king's minister so king's minister is there so there must be a relation between king and the minister unless there is a relation between king and minister uh, you cannot say that he is the king's minister but here the relation between king and the minister minister is not occurrence exacting relation you can say that king and minister are related with each other but you cannot say that minister is uh, king minister uh, is the substratum of king or minister is the aadhar of king because it is not uh, position of here, here we cannot say that king is present in minister by the relation swamitva so in this case this would not be an example of occurrence exacting relation but it would be very clearly and the example of non occurrence exacting relation because king and minister these two are completely different but are related with each other and we talk about here that king is related to minister king is the master of that minister and uh, because king is the master of that minister therefore we say that the minister is king's minister uh, so in this case however there is a relationship but the relation is not uh, one is not the position of another king is we can say the uses like the king is the position of the minister or the minister is on the king is not found in such case you cannot use these sentences the examples linguistic expressions that king is the position of the minister neither you can say that the minister is on the king because here in this case these relations are not occurrence exacting relations so uh, in the from this discussion we can understand very clearly uh, that occurrence related exacting relations are there and there are some non occurrence exacting relations and if there is a an occurrence exacting relation two objects in a horizontal po position are present then there is a no relation and if uh, there is there is a possibility that two objects are present in a vertical position where one is pointing to another then there will be a one if one is present vertically to another then in that case there will be a vritti niyamak sambandha and if two objects are present vertically without being related to uh, 
each other in such a way that they could form the idea that one is possessor of another or one is on another so this uh, this this vritti niyamak sambandh creates the idea creates the notion of adhara dheya bhav but this vritti niyamak sambandh does not create the notion of adhara dheya bhav and uh, there because of it यूज ऑफ लोकेटिव केस भूतले घट और पजेसिव सफिक्स भूतलम घटवद इज ऑलवेज पॉसिबल विद वृत्ति नियामक संबंध बट इट इज नॉट यूज इन वृत्ति नियामक संबंध बिकॉज वी से चैत्र से गृहम बट वी डोंट यूज हियर दैट चैत्रवद गृह चैत्र से गृहम वेन वी आर सेंग चैत्र से गृहम वी आर सेंग दैट द चैत्र इज चैत्र इज द नेम एंड चैत्र इज द Uh, owner of that house so ownness uh, is not something uh, such kind of relation through which something is uh, present somewhere to sum up this point that uh, how these two kinds of relations are there direct and indirect relations and how uh, these two kinds of relations direct and indirect relations can be understood in a completely different way that vritti niyamak and vritti niyamak sambandh uh, and uh, in that way we can form a long chain of relations which are actually uh, many times occurrence exacting relations and many times non occurrence exacting relations but those are very useful in in formation of logical ideas logical definitions and as the nayayikas do in case of vyapti and in case of pakshata in some other cases so thank you